Welcome to my first video. I wanted to take a little bit of time and look at some of the tools involved with sort of being a maker. Things like hand tools, power tools, and then more advanced tools like CNC, routers, laser cutters, and the lathe behind me. So we're going to take a little tour around the workshop and make a couple of stops along the way and check some of these things out. So here's a really rough sketch of my workshop. I'm set up in a 12 by 20 garage space. Uh, we have a little spot taken up in the top right by a staircase and a little spot there for my son's workshop. Uh, as we come down the stairs, uh, basically walking down the dark side of that, that tall rectangle there, um, some tall storage shelves. And then we basically have a line that comes across and to the left of that line is the wood shop and to the right of the line is uh, the metal shop, um, the laser cutter, uh, computer space and, and place where we sort of fabricate and assemble things. So let's take a little walk around that area now. Coming down the stairs we, we have sort of a storage area, organizer bins. Um, some little cardboard areas for storing. Um, we got some chemicals in here, electronic components, uh, different mixtures for a foundry project from last year. We get back behind this, this sort of floor to ceiling drape and we have the, the wood shop. Um, then we come back into this area, right? So this whole plastic wall kind of keep the dust and sawdust away from this other area, right? Because this is where the computers are. This is where, you know, we want to keep the dust low. Uh, sort of assembly, open area, starting to get into maker tools, 3D printer, robot arm, laser cutter, uh, toolbox, drill press, lathe, tool crib for all of our uh, of our sharp cutting and milling, drilling tools, the milling machine, some of the setup equipment for the mill, the CNC router, and the tool cart, laser cutter. One of the most important things you can start out with is, is a good space to work in, right? You know, initially it might be your kitchen table, you kind of graduate up to your desk. Eventually, you get a countertop, then you start to get several areas. Next thing you know, it's taking over your whole garage, right? So, you want to make sure you have a good amount of space. Uh, things like these cutting mats start to come in handy if you want to protect the surface that's underneath it. Uh, you want to have some room to like lay out your tools around you. Um, there might be some things like say, stationary, like uh, my soldering stuff kind of stays in this area. Um, that I might have some hand tools around here. Right? So this is one of my other main work areas, right? So we have the bent top lathe behind us. Uh, we have a nice long open area, uh, lots of space to do some metal working here. Um, we have access to, to our drilling stuff, as I mentioned before, some of our files and things. Um, so, you know, as we are working on a project, enough room for us to see some of the tools, uh, the parts of the project, and you know to lay out materials and things that we're going to need right in this case we also um, have some tools for the machinery kind of in arm's reach uh, so for the lathe um, several allen wrenches the chuck key uh, cutting fluids sandpapers and then as we get into the tool crib uh, we have uh, different cutters and uh, also several different cutters sort of hanging out in the back of the lathe itself. Initially, you might start out with something pretty small, right? You might have a small tool box like this. You might have uh, some of your hand tools in there, screwdrivers, a couple sets of pliers, something like that. Uh, but eventually, you're going to start to grow a little bit more. So you might get a slightly bigger tool box. Uh, eventually, you're going to work up to a tool set, right? 
it's a tool chest at the top of this combo unit. Uh, the slide out drawers, multiple. So originally, um, sort of had all of my electronic stuff, uh, screwdrivers, wrenches, sockets, and, and hammers, stuff like that in there. Started to outgrow that a little bit, moved some of the bigger sets of sockets, wrenches down, uh, larger power tools to the bottom of this, which is the uh, tool cabinet. And um, then found that I was putting like a lot of stuff in here, wanted some of it more closer by and, and portable. Uh, so let's look at the tool cart. At its basic, uh, you know, you you would want a set of screwdrivers, um, a good set of pliers, probably some wire cutters, wire strippers, needle nose, vice grips, uh, things like that, right? I think that's some hammers, um, you know, Allen wrenches. So in addition to the things we saw on the tool cart, uh, I like to keep um, a couple of sets of sort of interchangeable bit uh, screwdriver sets. I, I've got a ton of clamps, so as we saw on the side of the cart over there, a bunch of clamps, uh, vice grips, more clamps, C-clamps, drilling clamps, centering clamps, uh, you know, the more clamps the better as you start to make things. Wrenches uh, are plenty. Socket sets, uh, big sets, little sets, torque wrenches, breaker bars. Um, just want to be able to get all of the nuts and bolts off, right? And you know, you can probably start off with smaller sets like this, but as you start to work on cars, you know, really rusty bolts, um, specialty sensors, things like that, you start to just pick up little bits. Um, saws. Definitely important, so four or five different kinds of saws there. Eventually you're going to get tired of using all of your arm strength and hand power, and you're going to step up to power tools, right? So a few basic tools that I started out with, I think this is probably my first two cutting devices, and I saved a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and probably produced a little bit more blood in the process uh, with them. Later got into working metal, needed to, uh, you know, cut metal, grind metal, so angle grinder came in handy. Uh, this is a random orbital sander. This is a trim router for sort of rounding over the edges of woodwork. Um, I, think, I think those are pretty much that and a hand drill really all of my, my handheld power tools, right? Uh, from there, we step into sort of stationary power tools. So miter saw, uh, we want to cut uh, boards, cross cut boards, um, and then we can, we can rotate that to cut at angles. Um, under there, like I said earlier in the video, we have a flip up sander, so we can basically sand all of our wood projects table saw for cross-cutting, ripping, uh, and then we can wheel it in and out of the garage as we're, we're working on bigger pieces. Heading back over here, the last, uh, the last sort of traditional power tool in here, the drill press. We want to drill a very uh, straight 90 degree hole through a piece of stock. You know, that's definitely the tool for it. For me, my first sort of maker machine um, was a 3D printer. This is probably my third, maybe fourth printer. Uh, at this point, it has no more 3D printed parts on it. It is entirely made of metal, uh, besides belts and things like that. And this particular one can do 12 by 12 uh, by 12, and can, uh, you can see down here, can print with two different materials at once. And, uh, you know, is basically going layer by layer to print up objects. So as, uh, as I go through the channel more and as I start making things on the printer, uh, I'll be sure to make some videos of that and share with you guys. 
Uh, flipping to the left here a little bit though, this, this entire robot arm was done on the printer. So if we kind of come down in here, you can sort of see these striations across here. Uh, as we jump up into a little more light here, we can see lines across here. So these are actually layers of plastic. So if you think of this as just having started at the board, uh, over time I had to print every single layer of this uh, 0.2 millimeters at a time all the way up here. Uh, and th this is about four feet tall, roughly. So with the 3D printer, I used that to produce some parts to start this project. Uh, this is my CNC router. This is a router like we saw in the wood shop, um, basically spinning a cutting bit. An example of that. Uh, you know, it's just a rotating cutter. And it is carving out material out of the wood. Right? So even these channels on here were cut by this machine. Um, you can do very basic shapes. I want to cut out a square or we can um, do very complex uh, carvings. All right, over here is the laser cutter. Um, so it's a little bit cold in the shop, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep this off for now. Uh, but big giant glass laser tube. Uh, the green stuff in the middle is uh, water and antifreeze coolant. So laser beam comes out, laser beam hits the mirror, comes out here, hits another mirror comes across, goes in that little bitty hole, hits a uh, focus optic in here, and comes out as a razor sharp point, and will slice through uh, many, many materials like hot butter. So here's some example, just a piece that was inside of there. Uh, this is just a cutout from something. Um, some of my earlier laser cut stuff, so this is it's actually just the laser just traveling very fast to produce a line on it. And this is actually the laser cutting out material, um, just going around cutting out triangles. Over here is a milling machine. So this is another computer controlled cutting device. This one is a little more tailored to metals, uh, specifically aluminum, steel, uh, mostly. So. Just like the other machines, this is moving in X, Y, Z plane, spinning cutter, and um, it is cutting, drilling, splatting, things like that. So we can use that to produce parts. Um, some of these parts over here for the, the lathe project, uh, these were all cut on that machine. All right, so the next tool we're going to look at is the 7x14 mini lathe. So a lathe is uh, used for shaping cylinders, right? If I wanted to take a piece of round stock and I wanted to turn it into some sort of a screw like this, that would all be very possible on this device. Uh, so work is mounted in here, the work spins, and we can move this carriage back and forth and frontward and backward to um, carve threads to change the diameter or to drill holes into uh, round stock, right? So if we try to do some of these operations on some of the other tools in here, for instance, if we wanted to take this block and we want to drill a hole right here in the center of it. We'd say, okay, you know, maybe the drill press is all we have. We go ahead and try to do that. Uh, we'd wind up with a horribly off-centered hole, and uh, just because of the nature of what we're trying to do here, it probably would actually not wind up very circular either. All right, guys, thanks for taking the tour of the shop with us. We'll be back next time with some modifications to mini lathes. Uh, thanks for checking out our first video, and be sure to subscribe to get updates on the next one. Peace.